good morning everybody greetings from sri ramachandra university i thank the organizer dr ashok johari and dr itish kopalan for this rare opportunity i am going to give the brief uh, overview of the metastatic disease of the bone and uh, as you know that bone is a active tissue where there is a resorption reversal formation and resting phase of the bone uh, remodeling take place and simply how does uh, bone metastasis take place the primary cancer because of the angiogenesis invades the tissues embolizes and gets arrested in the proximal part of the uh, long bones or in the cancellous area and uh, the tumor cell proliferates and uh, slowly it causes destruction of the local area in simple terminology and first description about the metastasis was uh, described by uh, dr pages of uh, pages disease he published his report in lancet 1889 a seed and soil hypothesis as you all know the common sources in adults that is the metastasis the five first common sources is breast lung thyroid kidney and prostate and also from bladder uterus and gastrointestinal tract in children you can get metastasis from neuroblastoma ewing sarcoma osteosarcoma and malignant soft tissue tumors the common sites of vertebral metastasis is the most common site is the vertebral column pelvis and ribs sternum that is a cancellous bone and also in the femoral shaft humeral shaft and skull and usually metastasis is supposed to be rare below the elbow and below the knee joint but some lung kidney and colon malignancies can come in the wrist and the hand and foot areas there are two types of metastasis osteolytic and osteoblastic metastasis osteoclasts are activated and break down the bone the osteoblast doesn't form it it causes decrease in bone density and carries a high risk of fractures some of the common osteolytic secondaries are from thyroid kidney adrenals uterus gastrointestinal tract but various other malignancy also can cause osteolytic secondaries osteoblastic metastasis the bone is abnormally dense and stiff but it is also very fragile there is a very high risk of pathological fractures some of the common osteoblastic secondaries are prostate lymphomas bronchial carcinoid bladder cancer nasopharynx from stomach medulloblastoma neuroblastoma but very often you see mixed secondaries that is you have both osteolytic and osteoblastic type of uh, lesions very common in breast lung cervix ovarian and testicular tumors so the commonest mode of spread is by the blood stream but some visceral tumors you can have a direct spread like a ca bladder can spread directly into the pelvic uh, bone it's not uncommon so when you see a patient with metastasis you have to have a careful clinical evaluation history pain examination of spine and limbs and try to look for primary and almost more than 50% of the time you may not be able to identify the primary at first time careful neurological assessment and look for signs of hypercalcemia and pain is very often in most of the lesion types and remission exacerbation typical uh, is very typical like rheumatoid arthritis and there won't be much change in the lesion some metastasis present with pathological fractures usually due to a trivial injury and very common with lytic lesions very commonly with vertebral bodies and in the proximal long bones and some tumors can present with sorry some tumors can present in the metastasis in the spine can present with the cord compression neurological problem and some osteoblastic lesion can just overgrow and can cause compression of the vertebral column and skull lesions can press on the foramen can cause uh, neural neural compression hypercalcemia is a one of the very common particularly in the osteolytic metastasis it is less common in prostatic cancer and almost 30% of uh, ca breast patients develop this problem and it is due to excessive bone resorption and impairment of renal calcium excretion always look for parathyroid parathyroid level because some parathyroid adenomas particularly will look like a brown tumor will mimic almost like a secondary and where they respond very well to treatment of parathyroid adenomas and it's very easy to treat it with iv bypass 
phosphonates. You have to go for a routine investigation, particularly the serum calcium, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, serum protein AG ratio, some tumor markers and standard investigations like x-rays, bone scan, CT, MRI and biopsy. X-ray is the basic investigation and most of the time it picks up the lesion and if it is possible, if uh, we can take a fluoroscopic guided biopsy along with a plain X-ray. And bone scan is the standard investigation. It is uh, very highly sensitive but not very specific. And some tumors like uh, uh, metastasis or multiple myeloma, very often it will show a cold spot in the bone scan and uh, unless they have a fracture of the lesion. CT scan helps to pick up the lesion even in remote sites, but MRI scan is gold standard for particularly evaluating the spinal metastasis. It helps to identify the lesion and may not be, uh, and it is not uh, highly specific, but you have to look for any cord compression or any involvement of the surrounding vascular structures before planning the treatment. What are the principles of treatment of uh, metastasis? Relief of pain, control of metastatic activity, treatment of pathological fracture and prophylactic fixation. Pain management with analgesics, narcotics, radiotherapy, fracture stabilization and nerve and spinal trach ablation. Control of metastatic activity is the treatment of primary, radiotherapy, hormonal therapy and chemotherapy. So, systemic therapy involves uh, treatment of particularly the ovarian um, uh, see breast metastasis can be treated, managed very well with endocrine therapy and some biological therapy material also is available for systemic therapy. Systemic therapy involves uh, pain medication and also the radio pharmaceuticals. And uh, local therapy uh, in, uh, important for relief of the pain, prevention of fractures. And radiation is one of the important modalities of treatment of metastasis and 80 to 90 percent of breast cancer patients experience relief of symptoms with this. But only thing it takes sometimes months before full pain relief is achieved. It can take one to four weeks. And chemotherapy usually used before the radiotherapy becomes effective. But side effects like nausea, diarrhea, low blood counts and fatigues are very common. Intervention radiology has got a very big role uh, nowadays in treatment of metastasis, particularly this uh, vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty. It is not only useful in osteoporotic compression fractures, also in metastatic fractures. And this is the uh, uh, positioning of the patient for uh, interventional radiology. Once the lesion is identified, it is not causing cord compression, you can inject the needle into the vertebra and the cement is introduced, it gives excellent pain relief similar to osteoporotic fractures. Kyphoplasty is another method where you, a balloon is injected, uh, inflated into the vertebral body and the height is restored and gives excellent pain relief. Radiofrequency ablation similar to uh, osteoid astoma can be used particularly in the spinal meds for uh, relief of pain and it has got a very big role in future. And surgical management, it is almost 1.5% uh, of patients with the bone meds requires surgery and you have to uh, stabilize the long bones prior to pathological fractures and spine particularly when there is cord compression and instability. This is an important uh, criteria which has to be followed in most of the uh, secondaries in the long bones where the site, pain, lesion and size and the various points are given. And the patient score is more than 10, you have to go for a fixation, whether it is prophylactic or after the fracture, before the fracture. Non-fracture group less than 7, you have need to have a careful evaluation. It has to be followed in any patients with a pathological lesion in the long bones. Some of the indications for, uh, some of the just relative contraindications for uh, uh, surgical treatment, moribund patient, infected wound, acute DVT, neurovascular encasement, severe malnutrition and the patient has got a very short expected survival. So careful planning of the surgery is important and you have to, uh, different areas needs different types of treatment. Long bones, the best treatment will be going for an intramedullary nailing and for in the astabular or fem femoral head and neck you can go for a bipolar prosthesis and massive endoprosthesis orthoplasty is indicated provided the patient's lifespan is good. Some of the clinical examples, you put the mirror scoring, this patient has got a moderate petrochantric area, one third to two third size, lytic lesion, the score is 10 
and this is the x-ray of the opposite hip where the score is 8 so the left side is fixed with a reconstruction nail so another patient with a CA breast with a secondary the score is almost 10 so it needs a, a replacement with a bipolar prosthesis so another patient with a CA breast the score is 11 and there's already it is a fractured so it's an MRI picture needs a cemented total hip with a stabular reinforcement ring even the left side is replaced with a reinforcement ring so another patient with a late secondary of the elbow and the lesion is progressed in the two years and needs definitely a resection with a arthroplasty elbow arthroplasty so another patient with a CA of the bladder secondary in the tibia mirror score 10 fixed with a intramedullary lane good excellent pain relief so another patient with the unknown primary the lesion progressed within few days so you have to go for a intramedullary nailing with a uh, for excellent pain relief so it's done almost more than 10 years back this patient lived for six years after this with excellent pain relief so some patients may not be willing for surgery so but you have to go for only a palliative treatment in the form of good analgesics for the pain relief because they may not be uh, fit for surgeries the spinal metastasis we have to use this classification where surgery is indicated only in 1b 1c 2 and 4 patients with the immunologically incompetent very often may not withstand surgery so the standard uh, instrumentation bone cement augmentation helps in excellent relief of pain relief for this patient so as I told earlier it is a team management whereas orthopedic oncologist is only a part you need to have radiotherapist social worker and patient caretaker for uh, complete care of the patient thank you for your patient hearing